What about proteins? It's actually very similar, especially once we get to the small intestine. So we're eating protein. Let's say we eat a big um, chunk of steak or maybe it's rice and beans. Um, that's gonna be broken down first by pepsin. Where is pepsin produced? In the stomach glands activated by HCL. Those proteins are gonna be broken down into polypeptides that are smaller than before. We then have another set of peptidases, pancreatic enzymes. So trypsin, and chymotrypsin are the two that I ended up having on the learning outcomes. The other one is that um, carboxypeptidase. These are gonna break down the polypeptides into small polypeptides slash peptides. What's the difference between a polypeptide and a peptide? Some kind of, there's definitions of like how many it has to be. I think it's a 50 to be a polypeptide. I don't know. They're getting chopped down smaller, right? We need to get eventually though to what? Amino acids. Amino acids are the smallest unit of proteins and this is what can be absorbed. Some dye and tripeptides can actually be absorbed, but let's ignore that. Brush border enzymes are going to do this final step. So this is in the intestine, right? So there's aminopeptidase, dipeptidase, other names, because we're breaking down slightly different things here, the substrates are gonna be um, slightly different. Now, transcytosis can occur a little bit but we're actually mostly gonna go through the cell again, just like we did with carbohydrates. This is what that looks like. Nothing new here. Look, amino acids broken down by pancreatic proteases. I'm gonna add in here, because we're in the intestine. In reality, some might have occurred in the stomach as well, right? But if we're in the intestine now, this is step one in the intestine, pancreatic proteases followed by brush border enzymes to get to our amino acid. Um, I don't think this is, look, that says amino acid carrier. So this would be an amino acid. We are going to use a, use a different color. What do you think the name of this transporter is? The one I'm about to label here. What is it called? It is a sodium. Um, amino acid co-transporter. So co-transport usually uses sodium um, very commonly because we've got that sodium gradient. It is useful um, to use. It, it works. Um, but it can be different things carried with our sodium. So amino acids can be used, can be um, brought in that way. Once they're in, that amino acid can go out an amino acid carrier, a lot like a glucose transporter, but it's for amino acids. This whole process relies on this ATP pump. So this again is secondary active transport. So it's just like our glucose. Isn't sodium, the sodium gradient cool? It is. 